That's okay. So how are you doing? No, not too bad, thanks. It's great to finally speak to you, and uh, congratulations uh, on everything so far. Thank you very much. Um, thanks a lot. Um, how does it feel to be signed to, to, to a, a probably a, well, a, a world-famous um, British indie label, being American? Um, actually, you know, growing up, I listened to a lot of 4AD music, so actually, in a way, it's pretty cool. Um, it's just sort of funny because I guess I never would have expected that they would have been interested from the beginning, um, just because I guess a lot of, you know, people's perception is, you know, the scary goth label or whatever. And, uh, um, you know, right at the time, I guess someone got a copy of our CD and apparently everyone over there liked it and they called us up and wanted to know if we were signed. And it's sort of interesting because, uh, you know, it seems like sort of a new direction in a way over 4D with bands like uh, Cuba and Goose Goose. You know, you have more of sort of like a 90s sound, you know, or late, late 90s sound and stuff with the, you know, electronic music and that sort of thing. And uh, as I say, the um, the interesting thing is that as much as 4AD um, is probably um, well, it is. It's uh, internationally grounded. I mean, to the point of being um, having distribution in territories like South Africa, um, it doesn't take away from you know keeping that music where it should be. You know, as far as it not being uh, signed to a, a Sony or to a, a BMG or something like that. Was that important to you that you kept? Yeah, you know, that you kept. Yeah. It's it's sort of, uh, you know, uh, one thing that I really like is it's, it's like enough exposure, but it's not too much exposure. Like, to me, um, a lot of things you see in America, like, there are a lot of hype. There was a lot of hype for these new electronic bands coming out that, you know, I won't get into mentioning their names, but, you know, you see the posters everywhere. And it, after a while, it just became sort of like sickening because it was all about hype and uh you know these people started on a more underground level and it was just like all about being you know sort of uh sold to the mainstream that was like the, that was like the number one intention you know and like i think you know the danger is sometimes you know when you do stuff on a big level you know to a lot of people in a company like that, it's like selling shoes. They're just selling music, you know. True, true. It's merely a distribution channel because I mean that's what I found with I mean like yourself. I've been I've been a huge Foyd uh, fan for you know more years than I care to remember. And I think someone like um, Ivor Watts Russell, and it's very important that he himself can interpret what it is that you're doing before he would um, you know even take on a project like this in order that you get um, you know the best. Uh, the best commitment from the label, which I think is fantastic. Right, yeah, and uh, yeah, so far they've been great. Um, it's been really, you know, it's been really cool working with them. Um, you know, it's like we know everyone at the label. It, it's not like, a, you know, a, a major label where, you know, there's a couple hundred people working. And, and you know, and the commitment I mean, lasts about three months, and then they move on to the next thing. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's sort of uh, throw it on the wall and see what sticks. sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. as I say, sort of with the fact that it's now signed, you know, that you've now signed the deal um, with Foyd, you've uh, you've you've pretty much got a a very open ended deal in the sense that you're still releasing stuff yourselves um, outside of the, uh, outside of Foyd, um, but the 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 actual goal, I mean, as I say, last year with uh, you know with the album being you know the the most requested import album in London, um, what was the big thing with this just to get it to those people who were crying out for it before, um, or you know was it just a case of getting the music to the next level? Um, well, in terms of the re-release, I think it's. Uh, basically came down to it. There was still a lot of demand for that record, Sounds from Thievery Hi-Fi. Um, we were putting it out ourselves uh, over in the States. We started off, we pressed, I think, uh, 
2,000 copies, you know, and, and we thought, you know, it, it would be wonderful if we sold those 2,000 copies. That was our big, big goal, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, 30,000... Later. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's sort of like... <laughs> You're becoming it's a little mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's, it's really funny because, uh, you know, we're from in Washington, yes. you know, Hardly any anyone knows who we are, you know. Yeah, uh, it's normally the, the case. Yeah, you, you're not known in your own backyard, but you've got respect, you know, across the across the ocean. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now, as I say, with uh, I mean, um, the album that uh, you know that that OID have re-released, um, huh? that was I mean the, the original album was recorded in 1996, um, or released in 1996, but. Uh, and you, you've done various things in between, but does this does this mean that you're basically sitting, you know, sitting with a whole bunch of new material that you would like to release, you know, as an album, you know, quite soon, or is this is it a case of, uh, you know, basically just re, you know releasing uh, very separate EPs to an album concept? Right. Um, I mean, we're sitting on a bunch of material, and we're just about a couple songs from finishing it up. I mean, I'd like to see it out in May, the new full length. Um, it was sort of frustrating for us whenever we talked to, you know, we were talking to other labels as well. And one of the things is, you know, all the time that you're negotiating some sort of agreement, um, your music's sitting around. And in the meantime, you, you've created a lot of new music. And... You know, that's sort of frustrating at times because uh, you're just, uh, you know, you have this material and you want to get it out to people. You want to show that, you know, you've been doing things in the meantime. Sure, sure. Um, now, I mean, if, I mean you, if, if you had to sort of... Can you hold on one moment? Sure. Um, as I say, with um, you know, especially now, as I say, with you now working towards the second album, um, are you you know are, are you appealing to you know to an audience that already exists, or do you think that TV you know, TV Corporation has sort of created um, you know your own fan base, um, you know of of fans? Right. Um, that's a good question. Um, the next record, I think, for us is going to be a little more self-indulgent <laughs> in the sense that it's not going to be so, you know, it's not going to be so much about the hip-hop beats as it was on the last record. It's not going to be that obvious. There's going to be a lot of sort of, um, I don't know if you've heard um, some of the material we've released on 7-inch. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, we're going to, you know, that sort of thing will be out. There's going to be a lot of sort of like easy listening and the, the songs are actually more musical and I think they're structured a lot better than, you know, when we first started doing it three years ago. You know, I think that it's really sort of um, evolved and um, I don't know. We've been, in the meantime, we've been doing... Uh, you know, loads of remixes um, for people like Rockers Hi-Fi, Stereo Labs, um, Pizzicato 5, Black Uhuru, David Byrne, DJ Cam, a lot of people. Yeah, and, um, I think that happens, um, I mean, that happens by virtue of your place now, which is great, because now you, you're you you're in demand by, you know, by, by other key artists. Is, is, is that a sort of an element that you, you know, you enjoy as much as putting your own bits t- together? Sometimes, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know if I enjoy it as much as putting our music together, but it's a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, we sort of, in a way, it's, it's sort of a challenge to, you know, just take elements of another person's song and then sort of reconstruct something, you know, according to your own vision. And um, it's like with us, 
so we've never had anyone remix our material so far, and I sort of don't think we ever plan to right. have anyone do remixes. No, because it's... I mean, it's both... Go ahead. No, I'm saying, because then it tend, especially with, with what you're doing, I don't think um, anyone could r truly interpret what you what you guys are doing uh, better mm -hmm. than yourselves. Right. Yeah, it's sort of funny, you know, because especially today, you know, it's, there's just this, you know, heavy remix culture, and people are more interested in the mixes than the actual songs that are there, you know. And it's sort of the way I see it with our music. It's, you know, uh, a lot of it's sort of like painting in a way because we, we put it down in the studio and, you know, we're not, it's not so much about the live shows, even though we'll do it, but it's just sort of like the work stands on its own and it's like, you know, some painter having other people paint his work as yeah. well, you yeah. know, I mean, it's like, what's the use, you know, just do your own thing in a way, but true, true. I think a lot of, a lot of it's marketing, you know. True, true, true. So, as I say, I mean, you're in the UK now. Um, well, doing doing what you're doing right now, just doing a lot of promo and build up. But um, what is the feeling, you know, um, uh, in, in the UK now? Have you, you know, are you, um, you know, I mean, as I say, I think your 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 fan base is is pretty much UK and Europe, and obviously your your home territory. But um, is is there a buzz, um, you know, to to what you guys are up to? Um, yeah, actually, it's funny because, uh, you know, there's been a lot of press and stuff like that, and it's sort of weird to come over here and you pick up, you know, a lot of music magazines and you see your work reviewed or, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, just a lot of press and that sort of thing, or people recognize you and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's I mean, very strange coming from Washington because, uh, you know, London's a very musical city, but sort of like on the opposite end, Washington's a very political city, and music and arts are very sort of secondary interests to people. And so it's sort of strange to come to some place where people take music very seriously. Very seriously, yes, yeah. And, yeah. and, and I mean, do, do they honestly get it, do you think? I mean, because when you're putting this stuff together, um, you know, you you have a vision of, of what it's about and you know with with talking to people and uh, you know playing it live you know are they getting it do you think I mean just from a point of view of understanding you know uh, you know how these songs are actually created and what you know and what is meant to come from it right yeah actually I think that there are a lot of people that get it I think that you know the people that sort of um, that have gravitated to, you know, our records and the things we do are sort of people that have just been very curious in general because uh, it wasn't just a, a, a huge release or anything. So it's people that I think that, you know, have an interest in, in uh, speaking, you know, new music and new sounds and stuff like that. And I think, uh, you know, they're very open-minded. It wasn't like they you know, inundated with the Avery Corporation videos on MTV and then they went out and bought uh, the record because of, uh, because of you that, know, some yeah. pop song, yeah. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, all the people that I've met so far that are into the music, you know, they're very knowledgeable about other types of music that I respect as well. So it's been, been very cool so far. Right, right, right. Well, Rob, thank you so very much for your time, as I say. Okay. And I think it's absolutely great. And um, as I say, I hate the fact that you're, uh, that the stuff that you're still releasing, um, you know, yourselves is still very mm -hmm. difficult for us to get hold of. So I think you need to do a little deal with Hawaii D, but you can also get that <laughs> through there. Yeah. <laughs> but it so it's great chatting with you. Lovely. You have a good afternoon. Great. great talking to you. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.